Vibration, it's a noun. The definition, a person's emotional state, the atmosphere of a place or the association of an object as communicated to and felt by others. Welcome to Grounding Journey. I'm Chris Greer. As a 40-something mom, business owner, yoga lover, and long-time spiritual seeker, I've been craving deeper conversations, the kind that arise from connections with other women who are on a similar journey. My purpose with Grounding Journey is to provide a space where we can have real, fulfilling, and sacred conversations. So we are recording. And this is vibrations. I feel like I should be like some soul dancing singer kind of thing. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode on vibration. I'm Chris with Grounding Journey, and I'm excited to have my guest, Allie Fitzpatrick, here to discuss the word vibration. I just feel kind of like sultry when you say vibration. It just sounds like a fun word to say. So I want to tell you about Allie. So we met in a podcast Facebook group, and what I thought was really cool when we started talking is that she used to be a classical pianist turned spiritual coach. Like, how cool was that? So she is an international spirit coach, soul alchemist, kundalini yoga and meditation teacher, energy and sound healer. So basically all that stuff in her toolbox allows her to guide women on their journey to reconnect with their soul essence and their life's purpose using spiritual based tools inner discovery and soul alignment. And so while Allie and I were talking, where we talk about life's purpose is what vibration means to her. So Allie, I'd love to hear more about what vibration means to you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um, So as I was hearing you read the description of of the term, and then also when you were... (laughs) Um, so beautifully, like listing off all like the multiple facets and the multiple modalities that I work on and I work with both with myself and with other people, that term in and of itself is basically what we work with. Like everything, all of matter is a vibration. It's all of frequency. And so it's, it's really, really beautiful really really profound how you can link back um you can link back this term through like the main modality i I practice and i teach is kundalini yoga and that deals with the energy with the vibrations within our body the same with our breath work with our pranayama with our meditation especially when you um when you work with mantras, right? Because all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, those are vibrations. And so again, it's helping us to align from that place. And then the other thing that it stuck out to me the first, um, first bit when you started with the definition is how it was, it helps connect us back to our feelings and to our thoughts and that is exactly what I work on with my clients and now we do bring them back um, getting closer to their true soul essence to their true soul purpose and what they came here to explore and what they came here to do but we still do that by aligning with their own innate intrinsic energy within them and those own their own vibration the state that they're vibrating on um, yeah, I don't think that was at all your question. <laughs> no, it absolutely was because it gives us kind of an idea of why you picked vibration and what yeah. it means to you. So before we dig too much deeper, because like I love that you told us why vibration, because we want to know why we're talking about it today. And it definitely, <laughs> like when you talk about mudras, I mean mantras, they do. When you're doing OM in the beginning or end of a yoga class, you feel that vibration and it, it, you know, it radiates from everybody. So while we're talking about yoga, cause you know, I'm in my yoga teacher training. I'm super excited to kind of explore that deeper. Tell me about how you found your way here. How did you go from a classic pianist to a spiritual coach, yoga teacher? I know it's an interesting journey. So tell us a little bit about what your journey looked like, where you came from. Sure. So 
for the first um, 26 years of my life that was I have been I'm still I still play you know mostly just for myself but sometimes still for different opportunities and I still act when I want to act I haven't like these are beautiful facets of myself and they'll never go away um, but it was through my graduate program that I ended up in New York City for musical theater and I went through a circle in the squares intensive, their two-year intensive program, and I graduated, and about a year after, I, I, I was, I was living there, I was auditioning, I was working on some really, really cool, like, off-Broadway projects and some film projects, and I was building my community, but there was something so innately not right at the same time, like, my heart was like, there's, there's something more, and there's something not aligned. And so I remember the moment specifically, I was walking across, um, I lived in Hell's Kitchen, and with my partner at the time, we were like crossing 39th Street and 9th Avenue where we lived, and I turned to him and I said, Pete, I think I have to give up acting, like not forever, but just for right now, and see what this next phase could be and could look like, because I had just enrolled in a year-long integrative wellness coaching program and when I like when I came into that realization and fully embodied it and I was like you know what I'm okay to give this up it felt like the biggest beautiful space had opened on my chest and in my heart and I was just free and that was the moment that like literally my life changed I've had quite a few of those moments but like that that was probably the biggest one um, propelling me forward on this journey. And so I went through that coaching. I became an integrative wellness coach, and then I quickly realized health coaching is just life coaching in disguise. Well, then what is life coaching? Life coaching is just spiritual and soul coaching <laughs> in disguise. And so, like, that was always what I wanted to work on with clients. It was, like, getting deeper into their experiences and really helping them to create the solid foundation and the solid relationship with their like truest self essentially and just like helping us get out of our get out of that egoic mind state which we unless we know and have the tools like everyone lives in it right like that's just the society that we live in and so even at that time before I'd gone through teacher training, before I had done any of this deeper spiritual work for myself, I already knew like that was what I wanted to work on with people. And so fast forward a little bit of time, I moved back to Minnesota to save money to go on this incredible solo backpacking trip when I was 29. And I went all over Europe and I did it. I came back to Minnesota. I had applied for a couple jobs that I was told I'd be perfect for and I'm like yeah I like their events their development they're in the theater that I I've worked at for 10 years I love it they feel like family like yeah I'll totally like do this great and I didn't get either position I'm like okay well now what and again like the universe gave this beautiful opening for me I'm like well I've always wanted to get my teacher training. Like, why don't I look right now? And the only, the only modality I wanted to go for was Kundalini. And there was nowhere in Minnesota. And the first place I Googled that came up was my ashram in India. And so after like a couple weeks of like meditating on it and chanting and journaling and like tapping into my intuition, like one night I did a bunch of spiritual work I, the last thing I did was pull a card and it basically told me to go. I ran into the room and went, Peter, go find India. And a month later, I was in India to, learning a whole new type of yoga I've never done before. And again, the rest is history. <laughs>
like that was another moment that completely changed my life going to India studying this specific type of yoga in this specific place in Rishikesh like my heart completely broke open my heart chakra I had all of these profound visions and profound feelings and thoughts that I had never even imagined having before being in this space meditating for 18 hours a day like learning from people who like yoga isn't it's not like a workout it's just a lifestyle and oh that my. like yeah and so that being there in that environment living yoga as a lifestyle not just kundalini but pure yoga that changed my life and I went back two two months later to finish my 500 for kundalini hatha and do a hundred hours of yin and do my reiki level one and level two with my master and do like a beautiful specific sound healing and yeah the past two years it's basically been me <laughs> developing my own practice and my own understanding with all of these different modalities with these different energies and then being able to bring them in with my coaching clients and now creating some really really incredible workshops and incredible retreats and incredible programs um that i just i wouldn't have even fathomed if you would have asked me five years ago i didn't know any of this and now it's what i just eat sleep breathe and do because it's my life and I love it like I love it I love that you brought uh, vibrations because you said earlier vibrations connect us to our thoughts and feelings and then listening to your story where you went to school you had your profession because you don't become a concert pianist overnight you know like that's something you work on through years and years of after school practices so I think that right now so many of us are feeling that like, well, I went to college for this, or I've been doing this for so long, but they feel a call to something different. You know, myself personally, I've been in sales and marketing for so long. I have a very successful creative agency with that my husband and my son both work at. And here I am starting a podcast about grounding spiritual work, and I'm becoming a yoga teacher, and I'm stepping away from the creative agency so I think there's so many of us right now, as the world is shifting, as the energy is shifting, that are feeling that we may, they may be stepping into it already, or they may be like teetering on the edge. I have a really good girlfriend. Um, so as part of my story, I may have shared before another podcast, but I was in sales and marketing for 15 plus years, went back to school to get my graphic design degree, just to kind of, I had plateaued and I wanted to take it to the next level. So I'm the girl who, if you're on the edge about deciding to do something new, don't sit next to me because I will push your rear end off the cliff. Um, and I have a girlfriend who has been teetering for a while and she texted me actually this weekend that she had taken a leave of absence and was going back to school. You know, and in our forties, that's a big story for me. When I went back to school, I remember signing in for the entrance exam and everybody had to like write your name and the last four digits of your social security and the year you were born. Everybody in the room was born the year I graduated from high school, you know? So, so I love that you were just walking down the street. You felt that pull and you listened to it because so many people right now are feeling that, but don't know how to listen to it. So I know it doesn't exactly tie into the, definition of vibration, but for your definition of vibration of connecting us to our thoughts and feelings, vibration absolutely connects us back to our soul purpose. So tell me, I don't know how to question, like phrase this as a question, but for those people out there who are like, yes, I'm teetering, like what, how do you listen to your vibration? How do you use your vibration to connect to your feelings? I know that you said, through meditation, journaling, tapping into your intuition, using cards. Like I do all those things, which is why I'm in yoga teacher training and we're talking on my podcast because I've started doing those. But tell me like, what did your journey to, I guess that's the way I'll question you is what did your journey to listening to your vibration, connecting to your purpose? Like, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah. That's a really big open-ended question. I know my answer to it, which I'll share, but like, 
you know, like what's your meditation practice look like? What do you do when you're connecting to your intuition? That was a long way to get there. Okay. Well, so before we even started this today, I mentioned a quote by Rumi that I have for some reason been coming back to and coming back to over the past few months. Um, and I want to say that as I'll go deeper into an answer, but this is my answer for you. Your heart knows the way run in that direction. And that is like it. That if I could just have a full stop right there, you know the way. Like everyone, every single one of us, when we when we can honor the fear and the anxiety and the discomfort that we all fear when we're making big decisions because that's just the world that we grew up in. We don't grow up in a world that honors trust and that honors ourselves. We just don't, unless you have an amazing family and they're like very, very with it with their spiritual journeys. Like this is, we have to figure this out for ourselves. Um, but like you were saying with many other people, I'm sure having that, even that little nudge, that soul nudge deep inside of you without like the one thing that I want to say before you, anyone, this is for me too, before you jump on to judging it, sit in the space of honoring whatever it wants to tell you. It's not right. It's not wrong. You don't need to do anything with it, but try just to observe what it's trying to tell you. And even if it's, it doesn't need to be a, it doesn't need to be a sentence. It doesn't even need to be a feeling like a feeling that you can intellectualize. But if you can feel it within you and you can notice what your body is actually telling you, and if it's not constricting and it's expanding, then you know it's your intuition and then you know it's your heart and your soul. But when it's constricting, that's your mind and that's your ego and that's our fears and our attachments coming in. But that's honestly for me, that has been one of the biggest turnarounds that has helped me move more towards um, living and acting and thinking and just being love as opposed to living in this chronic state of stress and anxiety and fear, which girl, I lived in New York city for five and a half years. I am so, <laughs> so like that was me to a T. And then the past two years has been me unlearning all of those tendencies all of those like innate things that are my comfort zone quote unquote that aren't really your comfort zone because it doesn't help you to grow um but so for so that is one thing that i will do like when i get those soul nudge those soul nudges and those so like before we even started i switched my word and i don't know why i switched it but i trusted that that was the conversation that we needed to have today, as opposed to a different word that felt right. Um, in that. And so for me, it's honoring whatever comes up without judgment and then trusting that if I just get my mind out of, and this is not overnight practice, I promise you, this is something I have been diligently working on the past year. <laughs> Absolutely. But and it's like onions of a, or layers of an onion. You keep working on it and removing another layer. Yes, you do. But giving yourself and myself that space to just be and then getting to decide like, hey, I can act on this or hey, this was a really beautiful feeling that I just aligned with. And then you get to decide <laughs> from there. But I also, like you were saying, for my meditation, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I love Gabby Bernstein's quote, um, in prayer is when you ask and is when you, like you set your intention, you set your desire, you ask your question. And then in meditation is when you receive. And so that has been something that I have come back to time and time again. And my meditations look for anyone that's new out there for meditating, and Chris, I'm sure you can attest to this, but meditating is not sitting for two hours in a cave, cross-legged, 
ideas. Like, yes, I've Absolutely. met if, like people that I don't consider myself a yogi, but like people that are yogis, I've done that. But that's not the only way to meditate. And so that's why I love Kundalini because I align. They, um, there are thousands of meditations, literally 3,000. And so I say, hey, what am I trying to align with right now? What am I trying to work through? And then I, it, I, it aligns, like the appropriate meditation comes in and I'll practice it. Or else I love, I know I'm, I just mentioned her, but I love Gabby Bernstein's meditations that she has because they really, really help you to align with the vibration of your own truth and to um, uplift your energy and uplift just your sense of interconnectedness with yourself, with your guides, with the cosmos, with whatever. But like that, when we are able to align with those places, that complete heart expansiveness, that complete openness, that is what, that's like where the pure magic and where the pure gold lies. And that's where we, um, we have those answers that magically appear to us. We have the relationships, we have the opportunities that just fall into our experience when we can align from those places. Synchronicities and magic and miracles totally happen. You leave me kind of stumbling because like you said something a couple minutes ago that I want to talk about and then you said something else and then you said something else. So I'm like viciously taking notes or vigorously, not viciously, vigorously taking notes to get everything to be able to come back and revisit what you're saying. Um, okay, so the first one we'll go back to is when you were given your Remy quote, quote uh, one of my favorites is the voice of the divine is as loud as your willingness to listen. I don't know who said it. It's just on my bulletin board. So as you were, I have a huge bulletin board over my desk. And so as you were saying the quote, I'm like looking at all of mine to try to figure out which ones I, I connect with, with that. And, and I think that's so true. Our heart our vibration, our feelings, everything is as loud as our own willingness to listen. Because if we're not listening, then, you know, it doesn't matter. There's nothing that we can do about there. You know, we're not going to hear it. We're not going to follow it. But if we're open to it, and it's funny in my morning, you know, calling in my angels, guides, spirits, everything, I always say, because it is free will that, you know, we can't, they're not going to give us guidance if, unless we ask for it. And one of my regular things that I say in my morning prayer intentions is, please guide me today. And if I'm not listening, speak louder, you know, because I don't ever want to not listen enough. And I don't want them to not be loud enough that I don't mm -hmm. hear them. So that that's one of my, my little things that I love to say. But then another thing that you mentioned, and it's a word that I picked up in conversation with you. And it's funny because my son does our, my um, podcast editing and I have started using it now. And he was actually listening to the podcast. Now, granted, he's a 19-year-old teenager, but as he was listening to the podcast, he's like, mom, you know, from, yells from upstairs. Yeah, Kev, I think I just found my new favorite word. What is it, Kev? Soul nudges. And I was like, yes, it is the best word ever because we hear intuition. We hear all these other terms that are almost buzz terms, but soul nudges, like it's your soul whispering to you. And I love that that term of soul nudges and the fact that my 19 year old now actually uses it is even better. So thank you for introducing me to that word. But th that's one of the things that <clears throat> I think is really neat. And I'll tie it back into vibration is that it's just kind of nudging us gently. It's like the vibration when you see water moving because there's loud music or something. It's just that little bit of vibration, that little bit of movement. So it's not pushing you off the cliff, but it's just, it's trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. yes, it's kind it of fun like that. So tell me like, what does it feel for you when you feel these soul nudges, when you really start to, you mentioned earlier that your heart just, your heart chakra exploded open. So tell me about that and what that feels like for you. Ooh, so 
I think those, I don't think, like, those are, <laughs> they might, they might go in tandem, but they're two very different things. Um, yeah. Well, so, like I, I've now said, uh, I think two, two or three times I've brought up experiences where I didn't know why, but I, and you brought it up too, but I just listened and that was a soul, that was like the beginning of listening to my soul nudges, I think. And it's, it's not the, um, it's not like this loud resounding lighthouse for me. It's just this clear, like, yes or no, or wait. Or like nothing. Sometimes it's just nothing and then I take that as like, okay, cool. We'll revisit this. Um, but that's absolutely what it feels like for me. It's just those moments of clear knowing intuitively. Like, okay, here's this voice and it has no emotion attached to it. Um, and then that's when I know like this is something I need to listen to and it's not my mind making things up. Um, and then, very briefly talking about this, <laughs> this heart opening, this heart, like it literally, while I was in India the first time, it felt like for the first time in my life, something just broke open inside, like inside of my chest, inside of my heart chakra. Like I have never wanted kids, like ever before. And then when I was there, like and with people telling me, like, you have such a maternal energy. And granted, maternal energy is not just for being, like, a mom to children. It can be to pets. It can be a motherly presence in your work, in the world. It does not have to be to children. But there was something within that that went, oh, my gosh. I think that I actually want to have a child or, like, have children. And so that was a huge, huge revelation for me. And then the whole time it was just, there were, I have such a soft spot, like, for, for I'm sure everyone does, but for baby animals. And so there were baby animals literally everywhere. Like this is the first city I've ever been in where cows are revered. And so people would feed them dinners and baby cows were everywhere. And there were these some of them were really mean monkeys, and then some were really nice monkeys, and like the monkeys had babies everywhere, and like dogs were everywhere, and puppies, and so it just, I just, I just wanted to take home all of the cows on a really big airplane, but I didn't need to, because they get treated very well there, but there was just something about that that energy, that frequency, that vibration that I was consistently aligning with time and time again, which I know is my true, it's all of our true natures. Like love is just our nature, all of us. And I, because of all of the spiritual work I was doing day in and day out, 18 hours a day, like of course I was aligning with this energy because it's, it's just, that is what we're made of and that is our energy and so just piecing that together now, like maybe that's why your heart also fully broke open because you were living from your heart center for four weeks straight. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's neat to hear you talk about your experience of finding your, your vibration of beginning to really listen to those soul nudges to hear what it feels like to have your heart chakra open and be in alignment. And so I think, again, coming back to where there's so many people who may be on the verge of jumping off the cliff of changing their lifestyle, they're feeling that nudge. There's also a lot of people out there who are not listening to their soul nudges, not listening to their alignment. They're not feeling that. So I know for myself, you know, I was on vacation all last week didn't have internet, didn't have cell phone. It was so great. Like yoga on the deck overlooking the Blue Ridge part, the Blue Ridge mountains every morning. It was beautiful. And so I came back to my desk on Monday and it was hard to stay in that alignment. You know, like I was really conscious to stay there. My husband on the other hand really struggled. So by lunchtime, he was just like done exhausted over his day. And I felt sad for him because we had just had this great vacation 
And I was consciously staying in that place of not feeling overwhelmed, of not feeling disconnected. But I also started my morning with yoga and meditation. So mm -hmm. let's talk for a moment for those people who are feeling the loss of connection or just the struggle to stay connected, because that's a real feeling. Like we can spend time in meditation, we can spend time on our yoga mat, but 20 minutes later into, you know, somebody yelling at us, somebody unhappy with us, like there's poor people who work at call centers who we all get irritated at, but it's just their job. That's how they pay for their food. You know, so let's talk for a minute, like I said, about how to stay in that connection to give yourself grace when you fall out of it and to return back to it. Absolutely. So again, as you can tell, I'm really big on quotes and I'm really big on mantras and aligning with the feeling and the vibration of those. And the mantra that I was actually given by my new, um, one of my new energy healers just this past weekend, um, is the mantra, you are not your mind, you are not your body. Or if you bring that around, saying it to yourself, I'm not my mind, I'm not my body. And once you can fully let that sink in, it sinks you into the deepest place of your soul. So then, at least for me, that's what it did. And we did this incredible, I promise this is like 10 seconds, but we did this incredible exercise where after we talked, after the session, he had me stand up with my eyes closed and he wanted me to walk across the room, but maintaining that sense of interconnectedness and the sense of wholeness with myself. And the trick was I, I basically had to do baby steps and he would stop me and he would ask me to move backwards when he could sense that I was coming out of myself because I had this goal, I had this idea, I'm such an ambitious human being. I'm like, okay, great, I can totally stay with myself and I'm gonna get to that wall in 10 steps. That is unrealistic and that's just silly, Al, and that's not the point. Like the point isn't getting to, as everyone knows this, we just, we have a way of not remembering, just like we don't remember parts of ourself, but like, it's not where you're going and it's not the destination. It's how much of yourself and how much of that journey you can actually embody and bring with you. And so like you were saying, um, for those people who might not have yet that sense of connection or like your husband who it isn't able to bring that with him, at least not right now. Like, A, I just want to say, that's absolutely okay. Like, we've literally all been there in those exact same places. And the first step for anything is just that willingness to want to feel that sense of completeness and that sense of wholeness within yourself. And once you have that willingness, it's just simply maybe even 30 seconds sitting with that and noticing what it makes you feel. And then maybe, just maybe, with mindfulness and intention, what is your next activity that you need to do? Okay, letting that be what it is, and then trying to maintain this without getting up into your mind and getting into your to-do list, which we all have, Ugh. but getting into that feeling of like, how does it, which I'm sure you were doing, but like, how, how is it right now? And what is it, the other thing to ask yourself once you start to jump ahead, what is it costing me mm. to not keep this sense of wholeness? Because if it's costing you your happiness, your bliss, your contentment, it is not worth it whatsoever. It's not serving you. It's not serving the world. And that's what we're here for. We're here to serve. We need to make sure we are whole first. But it's also serving humanity and serving each other. And we're not doing anyone a service if we can't stay with ourselves and our own experience, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the joyful, the painful. Um, and so even as you were saying, so that's, that's just what I'd recommend in general, even if you're able to maintain that sense of connection with yourself, just literally being mindful. And when you notice you're not still in that alignment, taking a pause, bringing yourself back to either visualize it. We all have different um, 
skills, right? We all see things differently. If it's visualizing that place, if it's feeling into that feeling, if it's hearing that clear audience, whatever it is to help bring you back to that place of balance and wholeness, take 30 seconds, take a minute. That's all it takes. It's li- just like Pema Chodron talks about, it's if we fully commit to an emotion for 90 seconds, we will move through it. If you fully commit to feeling that for 90 seconds and getting into that energy, you will damn well be able to feel it and then be able to move forward if you set that intention over and over and over again because it's a practice, but you'll also just be, just like it being a practice, it becomes second nature and over time, you won't even have to think about it anymore because you know, okay, great, I'm feeling whatever you're feeling, let's take a step back and let's embody the feeling that we want to feel and then move forward with that. I really enjoy that 90 seconds. I don't think I've heard that before. So I I wrote that down as 90 seconds. Like my husband and I, whenever I notice he's in his moods, we take swing dance lessons. So I will make him put on a song and we'll take a dance break, which is like two to three minutes. And we have a great time doing that. So I can totally see the 90 seconds because it definitely lifts both of our vibrations when we do things like that. And so there's other things that you hear people say, you know, do a dance break at your desk. Um, One of my favorite things to do when I'm feeling just not connected is I'll Mm -hmm. do a squat so that I'm just kind of opening up my root chakra. I envision a cord going from my root chakra to my crown and kind of being pulled by my, my crown so that I've got straight posture and my chakras and my energy flow is really open so that I'm connected. And if it's really a rough moment, I will envision kind of the negative energy going down that cord into the earth so that mother earth changes it into something she needs. Cause she's a great composter, you know, so she composts that energy, uh, But one of the things I was thinking of when you were talking is, you know, you've been on a spiritual journey for a while. I've definitely been digging through my spirituality for about 20 years now. And I, I work from home now. So, you know, I'm not in an office environment, but I used to work in a really high stress company and industry. And it used to make me crazy because it was, I was in my early twenties. So I was still light. I was happy. I was really trying to explore my own spirituality and it was hard when I was working with 30 and 40 something year old business people who were so focused on their career because it wasn't a career to me. It was just what I was doing for the time. And I, I got this bracelet somewhere. It was an anklet and it was almost like what you imagine belly dancers wearing. So it was just lots and lots of bells and it, and I would wear it on my ankle because when I had to walk from my office to somebody else's office or just walk to the restroom or walk to the break room, I always used the jingle to remind myself to smile, to think about something different. And, and so sometimes, you know, you would shift in your chair and I would hear the bell. And so I really used that as a way to train myself to consciously reframe, because that's one of the things when you're trying to reframe and you're in the midst of everything, it's hard to remember. So having that external source to remember, like my husband, I'm his external source that helps him reframe because I see him in that place and I get him to dance with me for a few minutes. Cause I promise you love my husband. He's an amazing man. He is not having a dance break at his desk by himself because he's in a mood, you know, like us women do that. But I promise my husband is not doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I remember I had this, she was such a dear, dear friend of mine and such a big mentor of mine. Um, she passed away several years ago. So I think of her so fondly, but her office was across the hall from me and she was the queen of bad moods. And she used to make fun of the fact that I always had my bracelet. And so when I would hear her, cause we were in customer service, I would hear her get off the phone and just be in this place. I would go stand outside of her office door and just jiggle my ankle like vigorously, you know? And so it would make her laugh. And, and it was just like, I just have that memory and it was so fond, but there's other things that if people are struggling or you can't because you're in a cubicle or you're somewhere and you can't have a dance break, there are other things that you can use to program yourself, to remind yourself, to come back to that. Have a bracelet, the jingles, wear a bunch of bangle bracelets, you know, different things like that so that we can 
if you're in the beginning stages of learning how to bring yourself back, of how to know that you're so far off track, there are little things you can do for yourself like that. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And like the cool thing is, it can be anything, like anything that is meaningful or specific to whomever. Like I, the the thing that I wear, it's not on me right now, which is very weird, but I normally wear my Moonstone Mala. That was the first thing that I got when I was in India the first time. And so that has just, I'm sure, like the touch point, like you were saying, and like you were a touch point for your husband, mm -hmm. that is just like a walking touch point for me to be like, okay. And it's the moon, right? And the moon's your intuition, it's your internal life, it's tying you back to yourself. So it kind of felt like my comfort blanket the past year and a half, and I haven't been wearing it as much, but it was just that like merging, that bringing back to me and the fact I would wear it every day and like you touch it and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I have a crystal that was my granddaddy's and he's been gone since 89 and I wear that a lot. And so when I, you know, like you say, you feel it, it reminds you and it can't even be as simple as like setting a timer on your phone to, I mean, I did that with my husband at one point as he had a timer set at 315 that he had to come into my office and we had a dance break mm -hmm. so that he had to make that effort and start to program himself. And I don't like the word program, maybe reframe. Um, cause program sounds so like boxy. Uh, but you know, there is that own accountability for it. Like it couldn't always be me jingling my ankle outside of Paula's office. It can't always be me telling Matthew to get up and dance, but, yeah. but just finding little triggers like that so that you remember, to connect to yourself until it becomes almost second nature to you. Yes, absolutely. It's kind of fun like that. Are there any other yoga poses that you, because I know I'm a vinyasa gal, you're Hatha and Kundalini, so there may be some other poses that you recommend that somebody can do standing at their desk or in their kitchen to really kind of help ground themselves or connect. Well do you want um, those? So uh, I don't actually go to yoga poses for me to connect is the thing. I like will do, like you were saying, a really, really solid way is by like coming into a wide-legged squat and literally just like squatting for 30 seconds, like mm -hmm. up and down and literally just feeling that connection, right, to the earth below you. Um, that's a really, really powerful way. And the other way that like, it's right, we want to, I have, I like to have integrity for what I do. And honestly, what I do to connect in, I put my left hand on my belly, my right hand on my heart, because you're receiving and you're giving and connecting to physical, connecting to spiritual. And like, that's literally what I do every time. And then if I need to like connect in a different way, I always bring my hands into Anahat Chakra mudra and just like be here in those places i yeah i think it's i'm tr i'm working more with the physical body but i connect so much more with um yeah with mudras and with gestures i guess <laughs> No, that's absolutely great because, you know, sharing, because you can't always squat. You're in a short skirt. I do the left hand on my heart a lot of times when I'm driving mm -hmm. just because we live off of a busy, kind of a ways off of a busy street, but I have to cross that busy street anywhere I go. And so sometimes it's just nice to do a couple deep breaths and feel it, especially when your hand is on your chest and on your um solar plexus sacral area is that you really feel that breath move through you. And by taking those couple deep breaths and feeling them move through your body, it really kind of brings you back to a center. So that's definitely another way that I love to do it too. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like a safety thing. Like whenever I feel scared, I, I'm scared isn't the appropriate term, but honoring that place of right like we protect our heart and so just by honoring your heart you're giving yourself that signal to be like no 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 it's okay i promise like we're gonna be okay 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's definitely just a connecting. And right now, just in the era of time, the age of time that we're in, it's all about connection because we're all so distant that it's really, I believe that we're in such a shift back into connection and our oneness and our purpose and all those things that connecting to your heart is so important. Yeah. And like the other thing that's can tie back with our word of this episode is how we're all having to navigate what connection looks and feels like when we can't be in person. And I mean, of course that was happening before, but now it is to such an extreme that it's like, no, we can't intellectualize this. You can feel something when you're able to be tapped in with yourself, you can feel that energy and you can feel those vibrations even through a computer screen when you're both intentional. Right. And so, it's really, really interesting now, um, right? Like, again, working with vibrations and working with frequencies and how, like, that is the level that we connect on with people um, and how it just is, it takes a bit more awareness and a bit more of that objective bird's eye view to be like, okay, how are we, how are we circumnavigating this? Like, is it working? Is it not? What do we need? Like, how do we need to align within ourselves to make this connection what we are, like, what our soul is hoping for or what have you? Sorry, I was writing notes down too. (laughs) I mean, it's absolutely, we are all seeking so much connection in a time of disconnect. Mm-hmm. that we, we want to disconnect from our computers from online, but that's the only way we can connect to each other. So it makes it challenging, you know, not the only way we can connect to each other, but it's the only way we can see each other yeah. because we're not able to see each other right now. Well, the, the other really interesting thing, again, we can tie this back to our heart and to connection, is how we want to be disconnected from because we all are being inundated with screens and with like these external stimuli that we weren't before. However, so many people have not taken this time. Like the one thing we should be connected to the most is within ourselves. And so many people are uncomfortable with that and just that, um, that energy, right? When we sit with ourselves, it's effing powerful. And like, yeah, I, I at times don't want to sit with myself, especially in the past, because we're afraid of like what's going to come up and what's going to happen. But like right now is such a crucial and such an important time that yes, you want to be connected externally. Absolutely. But the person we all need to focus on is connecting with yourself and those energies and your heart center. Well, and while we're talking about connection, let's talk about the high vibe society that you've created. Uh, This is a new online Facebook group that you've created, and it's all about community and connecting with other people. And I've watched your group grow so fast because so many people are looking for connection and that opportunity to feel not just, oh, I sit outside and talk to my neighbor, but connected with people who are on a similar journey, who have similar interests. I mean, that's the whole basis of my podcast is to connect with people on a deeper level. And that's something I've really been watching happen in your group. And it's so neat. So tell us about your group. Cause after this, I want everybody who hears this podcast to go join your group. It's not, you know, we were discussing it before we started recording. It's not a group where you're trying to sell a program. It's not a group led by you. It's a group that you've created for a community where other people come in and talk and other people post. And it's, it's such a neat community to watch. Yeah, that was, um, when someone asked me, they're like, what was the impetus behind creating this group? I was like, well, it's because I wanted to create a group that I wanted to be a part of that doesn't feel gross. And that doesn't, I have such, um, I have a pretty, my radar goes up for a lot of groups because I understand like they're being used to sell something and I get that and that's totally fine, but that's not the community that I wanted to create and that's not the community I want to be a part of. And so yes, like I'm bringing in my own tools and I'm bringing in my own coaching and I'm trying to find a way to like 
<laughs> be the co slash like the leader not elite i don't like the sherpa right the guide on the side for this community but like you were saying i it's a very new group you guys it's been around for like a month so <laughs> yeah but in a month's it. time you have over 900 members like that's amazing because yeah. that just goes to show you how much people are wanting it and how much once they find it they will flock to it and it's not like you're not even really promoting it it's what i'm seeing is people inviting other people to it so they're bringing the people who they know need the connection and are seeking that. So that's what's so neat is that it's so organic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I, so when I originally created, I, I have, I'm trying to use a trajectory to see, okay, well, where might people have those energetic, because that's what it's about. It's, it's a group for us as a community to be able to raise our vibration daily and to break through different energetic blockages. But these blockages go across the board. They can be with money. They can be with our thoughts. They can be with relationships. They can be with food, right? Like it's with anything. And so when I first started, it looked very, very different than it does now because I went through and I, I have like, here are the list of like things to bring up and different speakers to come in and different lives to do and different Zooms to do. Because now as the group has grown to like 900 people, I have community, I, we have community members from all over the world. My events now are happening like in the morning at noon because it's like all of our new South African friends and our friends in Asian countries like Bali and with Thailand and Australia. And so I just want to be cognizant of actually letting this feel like a community and so with these new community members coming in i have i started reaching out to people for opportunities to be like hey do you want to come in and do like a quick zoom or a quick live and so a woman is coming in hopefully this sunday or maybe next for a, like a short cacao ceremony and then we'll have 20 minutes after to share our experience or just to to be able to connect with other people that like a lot of us don't innately have those um, connections in our lives. And so to be able to provide a platform, like even without me, I monitor the posts because I don't, it's not a sales platform. We have one day a week and like that's it. And one post a week. Um, but like people can post, I want them to post their challenges and to have other people come in and to like give support and to give um, what they've done. And I want people to post their wins. And so that's like something I'm slowly trying to, to like build in there to be like, cool, like what are you doing? Because it's not just me and it can't just be me. <laughs> it's all of us together. <laughs> well, and that's kind of to wrap things up for us. That's where vibration comes back because you're sending out your vibration and this is the vibration that you're getting back because it's the vibration of the whole group of what they're creating and what they're feeling together because they're vibing together. And that's mm -hmm. what's so beautiful when we have that opportunity to connect and people that we can connect deeper with, we get that opportunity and it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to do that. I've really begun learning that with the podcast and, you know, just starting to connect with people because most of the people, I think I've done two podcasts that were people I knew. And when I started out, I had this list of everybody I was going to reach out to. And then it, it didn't feel right. It felt forced. So I've been out there in different groups, in different places, meeting people, listening to other podcasts and finding people who I'm like, oh, wow, we have a lot in common. Like we we're on that same journey together. Let's talk about it. And that's what's so neat is when you find those people, the magic that happens. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just like meeting you, you know, like we totally were just randomness to connect and, and to see how much of the same journey we're on. is really neat. So I thank you so much for your time today and being with us. And I know that people are going to want to find you. So obviously they can find you in the high vibe society yeah. on Facebook, but is there something else? Is there another place they should find you too, to kind of learn more about you, not just your community? Yes. Um, you can, so I'm like, I put my crystal bowl in front of the, my door and my cat's like making her way in right now. Nice. Um, 
I, you can absolutely find me over on Instagram, um, T H E the dot wellness dot wanderer. And the last E is, excuse me, a three. And so I do, I do quite a bit on Instagram and then you can also head over to my website. I would say is where you can, it's under a pretty major revamp and rebrand right now. So things are changing and things are shifting and I'm adding in more of these different modalities and like what they are. But I'm also, um, I, every week I try and send out like a tangible tool in my newsletters, um, just to be able to help everyone to feel better, to like raise their vibration, whatever way works for them. Um, but yeah, those are, those are the main places to find me. Well, we will definitely, I don't know how people will be hearing this. If they're listening on Spotify, iTunes, you know, um, Google podcasts, but if you go to my website, groundingjourney.com or groundingjourneypodcast.com, you'll see the actual episode. So we'll have all the links to you there. And then we'll have some other definitions and some revisits, some quotes, things like that. So if you actually check it out on the website, you'll see all that. So Allie, thank you again so much for being here. It was so neat to talk about vibration and I absolutely just loved getting to have that conversation with you. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Such a beautiful honor. Have a beautiful day, you guys. You guys will take Chris. Thank, thank you. you for listening today. I would love for you to join in on the conversation by following me on Facebook or Instagram at Grounding Journey. That's where I get to connect with you and other women like us.